To begin our discussion about lenses, there are two key ways that we as photographers use to describe what types of lenses we are talking about, whether it be to describe what lenses are in our kit or what lens we use to get that shot. The first, which we will cover in this lesson, is focal length, something we've briefly mentioned in the composition section of the course. Focal length is one of the key elements of how we as photographers specify what lens we are talking about, especially when referring to our personal kits. When talking about my 50mm prime lens, I'll just call it my 50, or my 24-70mm zoom lens is my 24-70. These are all various focal lengths of lenses, the latter being a zoom lens which has a range of focal lengths. Now what is a focal length? What exactly is 50 millimeters? These numbers represent the measurement of the distance between where the light rays entering the lens converge to make a clear, sharp image from that point to the camera sensor. I know this is a fairly complex idea to understand at first, and ultimately knowing the difference of how lenses affect our photography is more useful than understanding how these lenses work. But because we all want to become better photographers, let's try to understand what is actually going on here. Take your camera and point it at a subject. Everything you see through your viewfinder or on the screen is light entering your lens and hitting your camera's sensor. In this diagram, you can see the subject, those light rays entering through the lens and converging. From there, the light continues to the film or digital sensor inside your camera. It's the same way your own eye works, actually. Now this distance from where the light is converging to your sensor, that is the focal length. Additionally, I will mention the term field of view a few times in this lesson. Field of view refers to how much you can see through your camera depending on which lens you are using. The 50 millimeter is considered the middle focal length of lenses. This is because the 50 millimeter has no distortion and is more or less equivalent to how the human eye sees the world. As the numbers of the focal length get smaller, we get into wide angle lenses. What this means is that a wide angle lens field of view or what you are able to see with them becomes greater. So while a 50 millimeter lens is able to see this much, a 35 millimeter lens can see this much. Initially, the effect is minimal. 35 millimeter doesn't look too different than that of a 50 millimeter. You can see more, but there is no change to the image's overall look. Now, when we get down to 24 millimeter and below, you can really start to see the difference in what wide angle lenses do. As you can see here, the 24 millimeter compared to the 50 millimeter allows you to see much, much more from the same location. These lenses can start stretching the image, adding distortion sometimes because they are greatly expanding what you are able to see. Where wide angle lenses start to get kind of funky and in some ways pretty incredible is when you get wider than 24 millimeters. Here, you can see what a 50 millimeter sees and here you can see what a 15 millimeter sees from the same spot. From the 50 to the 24 millimeter, most lenses remain relatively sharp in image quality without getting crazy expensive, but when you start to get wider than 24 millimeter, you will start to see distortion in the corners and edges. Things become sharper and prices increase for pro level wide angle lenses. Why does this happen with wide angle lenses? This is because the glass of the lens itself is bent or extremely curved. You can see clearly on this lens how concave it is compared to that of a 50 millimeter. It's pretty incredible what really expensive wide angle lenses are able to do, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you need to go out and spend a bunch of money to get one of them. Some people use the distortion of cheaper wide angle lenses as a creative style or take it a step further by using a fisheye lens, but we'll talk about that in a later lesson. Let's now jump to the other end of the focal length spectrum, which are numbered greater than 50 millimeters, also known as telephoto lenses. Where wide angle lens reveals more of the world, increasing your field of view, telephoto lenses narrow your field of view, but allow you to see things farther away in greater detail. For example, here's a 50 millimeter shot, and here's a photo taken with an 85 millimeter. You can see how you can see more details with the 85 millimeter. As you increase your focal length or go up in numbers, not only can you see farther away objects closer up, but you will also notice that your photos start to have a shallower depth of field. 
Where the wide angle lenses enable you to capture many things in a single image, a telephoto lens will enable you to really focus in on a single subject. To show a more extreme example of this, here is that 50 millimeter shot again, and here it is at 200 millimeters. Now, similar to wide angle lenses, the prices of ultra telephoto lenses can get crazy, especially when getting up to 400 millimeters and above. Typically, what you will start to notice when using more economical telephoto lenses is that they won't be quite as sharp or crisp looking. Now that we have an understanding of the difference between a wide angle and telephoto lens, let's talk more about depth of field. Again, this is something we covered earlier in this course, but let's dive a bit deeper. Depth of field is ultimately how much is in focus or clear in your image. Here, you can see that only a little sliver is in focus, meaning it is very shallow depth of field. Here, you can see everything is clearly in focus. The depth of field is huge. Can you tell the differences in the types of lenses? Typically, telephoto lenses achieve a shallower depth of field much easier, whereas wide angle lenses will have more in focus or larger depth of field. This is the reason that people love 85 millimeter or above lenses for portraits because the backgrounds have these beautiful look to them. These are the basics of what focal lengths are, how it relates to the lens, and how it affects your images. Although there are recommended lenses for various types of photography, it is best to find a focal length or lens that you enjoy for the type of work that you are doing. There are no rules in photography that aren't meant to be tested or broken. Next, we are going to talk about the second most important thing when understanding what lenses are, f-stops.